Car troubles hot on the wheels of the feds and Ontario's multi-billion dollar deal with Volkswagen to build a gigafactory in St. Thomas. The multinational automaker Stellantis halted most construction this week on its EV battery plant in Windsor. The company is calling on the Canadian government to, quote, keep its commitments in relation to what was agreed last February. What happened? Well, Stellantis says the Fed's promise to match what the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act is offering. Billions, essentially, of dollars in clean energy incentives, a.k.a. subsidies, south of the border. Deputy Prime Minister Christopher Freeland pointed the finger at Ontario, insisting the province needs to pay, quote, its share. For days, Premier Doug Ford insisted the province was giving Stellantis exactly what it gave VW, about $500 million apiece. But late last week, he changed his tune. I will confirm we're, we're putting more money uh, on the table there. Uh, this is all about saving jobs and giving people the quality of life they deserve in southwestern Ontario. And this is really exciting, no matter if it's Stellantis or if it's Volkswagen. Our Sunday, uh, our Sunday strategy session is here to talk about that. Kathleen Monk is a former NDP strategist and director of communications to the late Jack Layton. Corey Tonight was Ontario Premier Doug Ford's campaign manager and former director of communications for Prime Minister Stephen Harper. And Scott Reed is a CTV News political analyst and former communications director to Prime Minister Paul Martin. Hey everyone, great to hey see there. you as always. Scott, I'll, I'll start with you. Are you surprised at all that the province uh, late last week decided that, okay, we will folk, fork over some, some more money to this? No, I wasn't surprised. Look, you know, Stellantis uh, trained most of its ammunition on the federal government. But let's be honest, they were putting an EV gun to everybody's head, every government's head. And so eventually Ford was going to sort of sweeten the pot. And, you know, this is a sign of the times because with the, uh, you know, the Inflation Reduction Act, the United States, we're all moving back into industrial policy. The prime minister and Premier Ford, they want to boast, they want to brag, they want to sing from the mountaintops. Hey, this is our brand new lease on life, a new auto pack. We're going to bring all these jobs, all these plants back from Asia. This is the future. But of course, what that means is that in order to pursue that narrative, you are at the mercy of the companies. And if they say, oh, by the way, I'd like more money, it's going to be very hard to hold the line. So right now, this is the race that we're in. And I, you know, Christian Freeland is going to have an unfun time for the next couple of years. So keeping those purse strings shut will be very difficult. Why is it Why important, is it? Corey, for uh, both levels of government to be able to make the announcements in the way that, that Scott was just describing? I know that there are, there's obviously a big discussion substantively about the merits of these uh, deals and, and the, the plants themselves and the employment. But like from a purely strategic point of view, why do both these levels of governments need to be telling people in Ontario or people across Canada, we're landing these? Because there are tens of thousands of jobs at yeah. stake. Uh, is, is the short answer. Uh, <clears throat> you know, southwestern Ontario in particular has really taken a beating over the last 15, 20 years uh, as, uh, as there's been sort of a slow but steady deindustrialization of uh, that part of the province, which used to be, you know, one of the primary economic in engines, not just of Ontario, but of the entire country. And so I think these announcements are really providing a new lease on life uh, that's going to change uh, change everything about uh, these communities and, and families who live there in a, in a fundamental way that is 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 going to be I think you know very positive for uh, for, for both uh, Justin Trudeau and for uh, uh, Premier Doug Ford in terms of having a hand and and getting these agreements. But you know it it it's it's not a complicated uh, thing that's going on. This is a competition between. Uh, U.S. states and the U.S. federal uh, government, and uh, and the Canadian federal government, and and U.S. and Canadian provinces. So, you know, uh, companies will be rational actors and go where where the deal is the best. And we we're working to make sure that the deal is the best here in Canada. To both Corey and Scott's points, so Kathleen, how hard does it make it, in particular, let's say, for the federal government to navigate that when going forward? And right now, as we witness, corporations completely have the upper hand. They have the upper hand, and, and, and that's why the government would be better served by having a national auto strategy as opposed to having these one-off deals and not coming to it a comprehensive look on how their policy is going to be going forward. I think, I think really, ultimately, politically, this boils down to an issue management point of view. You know, issue management, when done well politically, you, know, you hear nothing about it. 
done poorly, it makes bad headlines, has disastrous outcomes for communities and sometimes in politics. And that's what we're seeing here. I think the Liberals were a little too quick to do the victory lap in 2022 um, before the race really started when the IRA kind of came into full effect. And, and we saw that by the series of escalating letters from the company to the Federals, Liberals. What I know right now is, is the president of Unifor, Lana Payne, has been working around the clock trying to save those tens of thousands of jobs that, that Corey just mentioned. And because this battery plant was frankly the linchpin in the EV you know, production facility. And if it does not come to a deal, if the Liberals don't pull it out of the fire with the help of the Doug Ford kind of province kicking in the money, it could all fall down like a house of cards, which is not something that those people in Southwest Ontario need. Here's my question, Scott. Do you think, though, that Canadians are readily um, understanding of the fact at this point that we're forking over billions and billions and billions of taxpayer money in order to secure these jobs? Like, do they th do they buy that argument at this point? Well, we don't know. I mean, generally, and Corey can speak with greater certainty on this because I know he's been doing some work in the area. But, you know, generally, I think the people are accepting of it. They like this idea of a you know, of a, of a new industrial strategy. This makes sense. This is a way to bring back jobs and plants. And that that really rings uh, as wise to a bunch of people. The trade-offs involved, I'm not sure that they've actually registered, which is why I think Stellantis, as much as it might have been a rational actor, I think it really ran a risk of, uh, you know, strangling uh, the electrified golden goose here. Because, you know, if you're going to do these kinds of deals in public and make it obvious that you can put your foot on government's necks and force them to sign a check for any number of zeros, well, then you are gonna trigger debate. We don't know yet where Pierre Polyev, leader of the opposition, leading in the polls. Where's he gonna absolutely firmly land on this? Maybe he says, you know what? I, I think we shouldn't be in the business of giving money to all these corporations. So I think if Stellantis, you know, it got its way, but it better be pretty careful because if it kicks this debate open in a real ugly fashion publicly, there's no predicting exactly where it goes. Well, that's kind of why I asked the question, Corey, because I feel like over the last week, the debate has in a way evolved, right? We're seeing just as regular Canadians more of how the sausage is made than we mm -hmm. would have in other instances. And I know it's difficult to know at this moment what kind of impact that has on uh, Canadians' confidence or their, their sort of what they, what they see, what they believe and how they, how they perceive this to land. But going forward, it might. Yeah, I think, well, I think there's a lot that's that's yet to be determined in terms of how this ultimately plays out, even after mm -hmm. there is an agreement uh, between the, the different levels of government, uh, the union and, uh, 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 and the automakers, uh, because it's all conditional on, on matching IRA, these, this, this huge mega program in the United States. Uh, but there are openers typically in these kinds of contracts where if if IRA changes, then the numbers change. Right. Uh, and, and if you're looking south of the border, the largest debate going on right now around uh, increasing the debt limit uh, is about cutting back government spending. And the very top of the chopping block for uh, Republican Congress is, uh, is the IRA. And you know, you're going to, in the U.S., see four different Congresses elected before this agreement expires, this program expires. So you know, what do you think the over under is that that this thing is going to get a haircut, you know, if not this year, next year, the year after the year after that, I think it's quite high. And I think that at the end of the day, the, the exposure to the public treasury to these kinds of deals is going to be ultimately be quite modest. Kathleen, what are your thoughts on sort of even if it is modest uh, in the future? It's not now. I mean, $13 billion is not a small exposure, plus whatever this ends up costing, plus whatever the next one ends up costing. It's it's a significant investment, but it needs to be. 20 years ago, we walked away. We didn't defend things under the WTO. We've The consequences have been losing those jobs and having basically what is now being revived is the battery belt. It's been the rust belt for the last number of years. In fact, I remember actually creating a tour in, in 2008 for Jack Layton, where we toured some of the, the, the manufacturing plants that had gone under during that time. So this is a big year for the auto sector. Big three bargaining begins in earnest um, in August of this year. Um, the government can't just cheerlead its way to creating new jobs. It can't just, you know, cheerlead its way towards a new industrial sector and creating that, those investments. It's got to put the money down. It's got to make those investments and then hopefully secure those jobs in the future. Okay, I got to leave the discussion there. Thank you, all three of you. Appreciate it. Corey tonight, Scott Reed and Kathleen Monk.